a sword that can pierce through anything that stands in my way. Focused and full of determination. Sekiro Shadow Die Twice provides a unique and outstanding experience from beginning till the end. The combined exposure from a staggering amount of exhilarating fights kept me on my toes and fueled up my determination to move forward. Mastering its deep combat mechanics is where it truly shines. From breathtaking and cohesive level designs that made me feel eager to explore, to a focused narrative that defines the character's motives and goals. Sekiro is one of the best action games created in video game history and its exceptional experience is worth remembering through generations. The story sets in the late 16th century Sengoku period Japan where master swordsman while Lord Ishin Ashina started a coup and successfully claimed the land of Ashina. The main character Wolf was adopted in the battlefield by Shinobi Ao. Wolf was raised and trained to be a master shinobi and serve a young master named Kuro. Twenty years had passed, the Ashina clan was in the brink of collapse which will be explained later in the game why and Wolf lost everything. We found ourselves in a dungeon in a sorry state, however guided by a letter from a unknown source, Wolf decided to find his master and save him from being captive. Wolf found Kuro and decided to escape from Ashina, but Lord Genichiro stands on the way. Wolf and Genichiro fought fiercely and Wolf's left arm was cut by Genichiro and took Kuro with him. We survived and found ourselves in a temple with a prosthetic left arm and Wolf decided to go after Kuro and the next event will start to unfold and battle left for surprises. Developer From Software was known for the cryptic narrative and open-ended stories in the same vein as with Soulborn games. In Sekiro, it is a bit more straightforward. The motives and goals at least for the main characters were clear as they were light into it. Nonetheless, it is a From Software game so expect turnarounds as you progress. There are more to the story as you can find bits of lore behind hidden NPC conversation and item descriptions. Hidetaka Miyazaki, director of From Software, really knows how to spice things up rather than sticking to the game's original theme. The world of Sekiro was beautifully and creatively designed, and stopping to marvel a specific area was a regular thing in my first playthrough. Each area has its own unique design that stands out from the others, hence remembering a specific area while backtracking was not an issue. One can clearly see the immense effort poured in level design. From the ashen outskirts and its mountain and castle view, the abandoned dungeon known for its dark caves and waters, Senpo Temple with its awestruck temples and giant trees, Ashina Castle's rooftops and high towers where the grappling hook is where the most fun to use, Sunken Valley with its treacherous fort and large statues, to the mysterious Mivu village and its ominous atmosphere. I was not surprised for the well-composed soundtracks and effects combined and fit perfectly in the game. Normal battles have its themes depending on its area and exploring was never been this calming as the atmospheric music plays in the background. From Software did a fantastic job in their previous games and Sekiro is no different in terms of quality. The overall soundtrack did an excellent job of elevating the experience. Exploring the nook and crannies of Ashina gave me this organic feel that I'm exploring a real world and finding the secret paths and interconnected tunnels that leads to previously visited areas piqued my curiosity and hunger for exploration.
Sekiro's greatest strength lies with its close to perfect combat design. Soulborn players can feel right off the bat that almost everything came from the DNA of Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Sekiro is an evolution of the Soulborn mechanics, especially in combat execution and facing. The combat may feel familiar when you get toe to toe with your first enemies, masking the new mechanics, thinking dodging and attacking are still the way. But as you progress, more enemy types will be introduced with unique movesets that you need to parry and soon you will realize that mostly attacking and parrying are more effective against your enemies. Wolf and his enemies have a health bar and the newly integrated posture bar. This is more of the stability or composure in a fight. You can guard and deflect attacks with your sword and the same goes to your enemies and normal attacks can increase the posture bar regardless if the attack was parried or guarded. Guarding against normal attacks will protect you from harm as long as your posture meter is not on its limits. When your posture bar was filled, Wolf will be in a posture broken state, unable to move in a second, leaving him wide open to upcoming attacks. On the other hand, you can unleash quick and ruthless death blows to your enemies leading them to quick deaths regardless of the remaining health. Parrying attacks precisely with your L1 button and dealing death blows were already fun enough. How about we add the icing on the cake? There are specific types of attacks that Wolf cannot simply guard or parry. These are perilous attacks. Wolf will be prompted with a red kanji symbol that means danger and players must carefully observe what kind of perilous attack that the enemy will deal so one can counter the attack or avoid it. There are three basic perilous attacks and first are the sweep attacks that can be avoided by jumping, second are the grab attacks that requires precise dodging, and the third one is my personal favorite and these are the thrust attacks. The skill to counter these attacks needs to be unlocked first in Wolf Skill 3 and the Mikiri counter counters thrust stomping the enemy's weapons to the ground dealing a large amount of posture damage. Countering these perilous attacks while exchanging blows and parries begets thrilling and satisfying experience like no other if executed perfectly. There is a steep learning curve in mastering Sekiro's combat and sure, this game is tough and From Software is known for this trademark. Adapting to Sekiro's newly designed combat is the beauty of it and expect to die a lot as the game will throw uniquely designed major bosses with mini bosses in between meaning you will be engaged in battles after battles to keep your skill in check. While there is no stamina bar that players need to keep an eye on, mindlessly hacking will not cut your way through and precise timings are still the key here. While I found stealth plays a minor role in combat, sure it can drastically lessen the burden by picking out your enemies one by one when storming an outpost or by chopping 50% of a mini boss's health as you backstab or jump through them to gain the upper hand however the whole idea of stealth needs a lot of improvement. If someone spotted you and you quickly run and hide, wait 10 to 15 seconds or so and the AI will return to its position like nothing happened. I tend to ignore this flaw and blaze through anything that I encounter since I was obsessed in fighting the mini bosses at their full health and this helped me learn and grasp the combat mechanics. I was mesmerized by the idea where I was constantly being challenged by uniquely designed enemies from the mobs up to the bosses. As I go deep, I was introduced to different enemy types and each of it has its own identity and anyone can utterly see the effort of FromSoft to make things unique and fresh. This idea can turn into frustration for most people on the other hand as the game provides barrage of challenges with little respite in between. Sekiro requires focus, energy, and most importantly patience as it can be brutal most of the time. This is a From Software game after all, every enemy is a threat, the soldiers who guards the castle's outskirts that can overwhelm Wolf by their numbers, the speedy ninjas that can easily eat your health points by their deadly kick combinations, the elite samurai of Ashina that has lightning fast sword mastery that cuts enemies in a blink of an eye, the resilient Senpo temple monks known for their lethal strikes and bone breaking throws, the snipers of the sunken valley clan adept in both long and close range combat. The rest are better left for surprises and just imagine how well the mobs were programmed, how much more for the major bosses. The pressure that adds up every time I'm encountering new enemy types forcing me to learn and adapt forms a constant flow and often leads to satisfying and rewarding experience. Given the difficulty that Sekiro has, I never felt cheated after suffering multiple deaths. 
Dying taught me a lot and I knew right off the bat that it was my fault why I got beaten. The demanding combat mechanics serve as my fuel and inspiration to stand up and defeat anyone who stands in my way. As I kept on moving forward and get better and better, no words can describe the feeling that I had after going deep in combat, especially when I stood toe to toe with a specific boss and managed to parry all of its attacks and completely owning the fight. How long I waited to feel this kind of blood rush matches as I best my enemies with my mastery and get rewarded with unparalleled sense of accomplishment. Fortunately, Wolf can be resurrected once per enemy phase to continue a fight, hence it is possible to resurrect twice in battle and permadeath will cost you half of your current skill points and send your currency in the game. Most bosses have two life bars so it is advisable to know when to resurrect or give up. Permadeath also results to possible Dragon Rod sickness which may have consequences for NPCs. Performance wise, the game has still minor issues that needs to be improved on. The game runs at 40 to 50 FPS at least on the PS4 Pro but still expect frame drops in some areas. A particular old issue can be noticed when dealing with large group of enemies where they slows down and shows cartoonish movements like in the previous games. I did encounter some stutters and fortunately it is absent in battles, especially in major bosses. These performance challenges can easily be ignored but definitely needs to be fixed. Aside from Wolf's Katana, the Kusabi Maru, he is equipped with prosthetic arm that can cleverly transform into different kind of tools or weapons that he can use to turn the tide of a battle or effectively traverse a certain area. Players can equip up to 3 tools and cycle through it and react in their current situation. Example of these tools are the following Sabi Maru that deals multiple blows and inflict poison, loaded axe that can crush thick armors, loaded spear for long range and sweep attacks, and the loaded umbrella that serves as a shield and protect wolf from harm. The prosthetic tool upgrades have its own skill tree and players can use sand and upgrade materials to unlock further improvements for added effects. Sekiro gave me the freedom to explore a semi-open world and Soulborn players knows how this works. While it starts off linearly, I was given the leisure to take different paths or visit other areas after the first half of the game. Players can take this opportunity to explore if already facing a wall or simply cannot defeat their adversaries in a certain area. While the downside is, there are no new shinobi shizoku or clothing to find and players can only use the Kosabi Maru or Wolf's Katana as the main weapon. In my perspective, this is perfect in the reason of my mastery belongs to swords, especially katanas. However, this idea can be taken differently by others who have different playstyles. The overall progression flows in a typical From Software fashion. No maps, obscure NPC quests, Multiple endings require specific choices or paths but less cryptic compared to the previous games. Clues to find specific items or to progress were handed down here and there and NPCs blatantly giving clues where to go next. I find it a little bit disappointing in some parts, however understanding the fact that From Software went to a different direction and conveyed a focused narrative explains why. You have characters to care about especially Wolf and his goals that were set clearly right from the start. It is kind of refreshing from the perspective of the Soulborn series and I appreciate it. Character growth is relatively straightforward. Wolf has three stats, Vitality, Strength, and Posture Meter. Vitality and Posture Meter can be increased after collecting four prayer beads from mini bosses, while boss memories can increase strength or by skill points at endgame. Aside from Shinobi prosthetics, Wolf has its own skill tree and there's a wide variety of skills to choose from and unlocking the said skills requires skill points from slain enemies. Unlocking passive skills will tremendously improve Wolf's fighting capabilities such as the ability to regain precious health after dealing successful death blows or a passive skill that empowers Wolf's posture's damage overall. After 33 hours of playtime, I finished my first playthrough. The sense of accomplishment that I experienced was unimaginable and I wanted more. After all the hardships that I've been through, the urge of defeating the game all over again with style was inevitable. 
The expected From Software New Game Plus design is still present in Sekiro. You carry almost everything, your skill and prosthetic tree progress, your old stats, items, send, aside from some key items from the first playthrough. Players are welcome to follow new path that leads to new endings and there are still plenty of things to do in the next cycles. For players who seek back-breaking challenges, the difficulty spikes in New Game Plus 5 to 7. Enemies can utterly one-shot you and on top of this, as early as New Game Plus 2, players can remove the item called Kuro's Charm, making all guarded attacks lessen Wolf's health, so wrong calculations can easily lead to deaths. There are no new modes aside from the added difficulty and pretty much everything in the game can be obtained between 60 to 80 hours and this greatly varies depending on skill. Sekiro Shadow Die Twice is a brilliant deviation from its predecessor's tested formulas and set of ideas and it can stand on its own. In spite of the minor performance issues, the overall presentation and the thrilling battles indeed overshadowed its shortcomings. My deep appreciation for its unequaled experience will be treasured and definitely hoping for a sequel. I do recommend playing this game in spite of its debatable difficulty and experience the wonders that it can bring to the table. I would like to give my highest regards to From Software for creating such game and we will eagerly wait for more. If you try this game, be sure to leave a comment below about your experience. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it or thumbs down if you don't. Don't forget to subscribe and for more awesome content, be sure to turn on the notification icon so you can get notified with the latest updates. Thank you for watching and keep it locked here at Einzel Wolves. Empowering gamers that will touch lives. Signing out.